boys and girls. We got some wise fab here. Wise fab knuckle comes just as is that you see here. No bearing, nothing. So then you gotta, in a Supra's case, you gotta press in the bearing. And there's like a little clip here, C-clip style thing. Container clip that you gotta put in and then the dust seals. It's like the hub, everything. So I am going to do two sets because I have another extra set and that will go in the race trailer for the big comp car, the big trailer, like comp car for Big Blue. This is gonna be for the SC300. So we're starting to put uh, parts together for the SC300. This is the first thing I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna get some stuff figured out on the outside of the car before I bring the car in, put it on a lift, and start tearing stuff apart. I did have an idea. The steering rack has oh, two. Great. Dan's oh. got an idea. Oh, Joe's yeah, here. Up, I didn't know Joe's over here. Let's what go. Are you doing, man? Let's go look at all these red, white, and black Supras Joe's working on. <laughs> Ooh, XRP crimp hoses. Let's see. Just finish wiring up the relay. I'm getting sidetracked, huh, guys? Joe put in a dual pump hanger, wired up stuff, like you just said, and then now he's doing the E85 compatible lines um, under this guy's Supra. But he wants to maintain all the stock stuff, so yeah. maybe put it back to factory at some point. So, so he said don't remove these lines. But the only thing we did remove is a stock filter, but he can bolt that back in later because radium setup bolts directly in there. And reposition the flex fuel because oh yeah he had the flex fuel the, in a uh, shitty area yeah i'll do like a 45 around yeah, I, did, I didn't want to drill like i wanted to drill as few holes as i could so i just there was a nut here like a factory nut here so i pulled out the bolt and put in a longer bolt so i could then thread the you know put the p-clamp onto the back end of the bolt looks good and the wiring reaches Okay, so we got distracted, but it was with a cool car. The SC won't be that cool, but I had, <laughs> I had this idea. So on the SC, if I drop the whole front subframe out, then it might be quicker and easier to bolt everything up, all the wise fab, and then just bolt it right back in. And I just have to prop up the motor and hold the motor up there while I do it. Then I could check the rack and everything while it's, I don't know, we'll see. But first I'm gonna get all the parts ready, so I'm gonna start pressing in some hubs and bearings here. Guys, that's the press. It already did a lot of work. Reason being is I only have two hands and I needed both of them. But you get the idea, I press these bearings in here. I'm gonna throw this clip in there, it goes in that little groove down in there. Then put the, the dust seal on that side. I'll come back over to the press and press my hubs in there. Once again, how versatile is this cart? I've got four knuckles on it, and then I can go this way, where I'm gonna need to use a table for, um, I need to get like the brass, little brass punch and brass hammer, so this thing definitely comes in handy when you need it. It's kind of one of those things that every shop needs like two or three of. Welcome back, guys. SC300 build is about to go down. Grab this subframe out of my container where I had a couple spare super parts. Shares this front subframe exactly with the SC300. We put a new, not new, but a refurbished rack on here. I pressure washed this real quick. I spared you guys the details of that. I know you wanna see more in depth of when we're building and what we're doing, but some of it is boring. I'm not gonna share with you guys. But so my plan to start would be I guess we already are there. Front subframe, I'm thinking it's gonna be easy to do it this way. Let me describe why. So I was gonna attach all the WiseFab stuff, all the arms and the coilovers onto this. I was gonna get, who? we got Charles here. So then I was going to get, let's see, that little power brace thing that goes across there and I just hooked the motor to it and then drop the front subframe out of the car and leave the motor suspended on the arms on that thing up there. I'll show you guys when I do it. And then after I have everything assembled, just right up inside with the new front subframe. That's in my, my head was gonna be the easiest way to do it. So I'm gonna try that. Then next, after the wise fab is on and the Stance coilovers, I'm going with Stance XR1 coilovers. They're used, I used them on my Pro Drift car many years back, but they're in good working order. 
They're great suspension. They will make for perfect setup on this car. Those two mods will be the first thing. Rear coilovers, front coilovers when I do that, and the wise fab, and then a front alignment. And then we'll see what we have to do uh, trimming wise or what we gotta do to put the new front wheels on. Um, they're not gonna be new, but the front wheels I'm gonna put on here are gonna be raised hand-me-downs from the pro car or hand-me-downs from baby blue that's where we're gonna start then we're gonna go through a couple of these parts later but we got ACT clutch we have that Collins adapter kit you see like a stock clutch and brake pedal in there we're gonna need that Sparco side mounts and for a seat I have a hand-me-down seat that can go in here and I have Sparco makes the base for the race seat right here for the SC300, Lexus SC300-400 driver. Got a handful of really cool parts. Um, we're gonna put a welded diff in it. I'm gonna need to get a custom drive shaft. I got this really cool Samsona short shifter for a BMW. So looks the same as the one that's in baby blue. It started out, they were using them in H pattern, you know, BMW shifters, but then the way that shift mechanism works on the four speed that's in baby blue, you can use that same one, but I'm not gonna have a Samsonis in here. I'm gonna have a really cheap ZF transmission. And then I have a handbrake that'll go in there. The plan inside the car was to remove the carpet, remove some other heavier items that I can, but I'm gonna leave the dash in there. I'm gonna leave the stereo in there, the speakers if I can in there. I'll probably remove the door panels, but leave the door on there and just have a handle to open it up and somehow have a way to have windows still, but no door panels so that a little bit of weight's removed. The seats are coming out. The back seats I was gonna leave in. I'll tell you why later. Stuff in the trunk like carpet can come out and any other weight saving things can come out, but I'm gonna wanna street drive this car to the track, so it's gonna need some of the interior comforts and I'm not gonna take AC out. I'm gonna try and leave it in A, but we, we all know it's gonna end up having a turbo. And so when I turbo it, I'll probably move the battery in the back, intercooler, and then I will move, um, no, I'll still have AC, and I bet you I can still use a stock radiator and fan truck. So let me get a GoPro set up, and I'm gonna start taking apart what I'm gonna, if I can right now, take apart what I can to get ready to drop the front end, or maybe I'm just gonna set up the wise fab on this new subframe, and we won't drop it out yet, I'm not sure yet. All right. All right guys, I wanna show you this before we start tearing into it. So here's the engine bay, just stock as stock can be. Same with the inside I showed you. So let's take a look underneath it because it's pretty stock under there. A little bit of oil leaks, not really that bent anywhere, nothing crazy wrong with it, but let's take a look together. And I could tell you more of the plan that I'm doing underneath here. The diff would need to come out, exhaust. Maybe you could just start here and put a V-band and connect, I don't know. I'm gonna see what I could do. Uh, I'm trying to get the most power out of it in A, so you, you might not want to do that. I'm not sure yet. Trans is obviously coming out. Got a little oil leak at the rear main, possibly. We'll find out before we do the clutch. To be honest, the pan doesn't look like it's leaking. It looks like it's leaking somewhere around the rear main, but I don't know the answer yet. And when you're up inside here, it doesn't look too horrible, but it doesn't look too great, but it does have a lot of miles. Oh, the trans cooler lines. We're gonna pull a bunch of this stuff apart, but I gotta pass smog with it first, so I think I might set up. Whoa, a couple things are different. The way that subframe link point is slightly different than a Supra. What I was gonna do first, like I was describing, just drop the front subframe, leaving the motor in there on that little support thing. I just didn't wanna disable this car for too long without being able to drive it, but we have everything we need here to do that front end stuff. Possibly would need better motor mounts. So maybe I switch those to a little bit stiffer ones. I don't think I have them here. We'll find out what I do with that, but um, quick and easy stuff would be what we were describing with the front subframe, so we'll go ahead and start with that. 
now that you guys have seen underneath it. But uh, like I was saying, there's no dents really in the frame rail. There's a little baby scrape and dent here, but nothing major. Overall, this car is like really clean. It's funny that how cheap this car is. If this was a Supra, it'd be like $25,000 probably for an NA version of this. So stupid. All right, guys, let's lower it back down and get to work. Nothing's tight yet, but I measured out how I like it now on the wide strap front end. What I mean by that is how many threads out we have here, here, down there, down here. So it gives me my camber caster setting. It's rough. Each car will be a little bit different. There's a little bit of tolerance within a stock subframe, so it'll be a little off, but now I, I can adjust it with the cam bolts because I still use stock Toyota cam bolts so that I can clock it and like do my final adjustments on camber caster down there when it's in the car without having to pull it off and thread a heim in or out. But I have my rough settings in, fresh rack in, fresh tie rods in. Wide strap did something a little different on this one with the Ackerman spacers. Normally I run the triple peak one, but there wasn't even enough clearance to run it. Not sure why. So I'm gonna try the second one, which is a little less Ackerman. If I don't like it, I can always put those in and then like clearance the edge of the hole. <laughs> Let me describe this to you guys. So let's say you have a zero one. There's an oblong hole in here. See how it's an oval hole there. If you ran the zero one, it'll be dead center. If you run the triple peak one, it'll be all the way to the outer edge this way. But if you run the dual peak one, there's maybe like a 16th of space. It's almost like the dual one is as big as they used to be on last year's kit over here. Something slightly different, but I need to drive it to see. You can always adjust that. It's really easy to take the tie rod out and adjust that later. So that's relatively close to being ready. I still need to put the through bolt in on the bottom of each coilover. This bolt down here. So I'm going to throw that in right now. Luckily, I had this bin of hardware that's from another SC I had parted out five years ago. A wrecked one I got at a decent price. So I'm gonna throw these in and then I'm not gonna tighten anything. I might flip it upside down and tighten some stuff down, snug it at least, but I didn't like tighten these bolts yet or this bolt yet or that because I might take it back out is my thought. So still haven't dropped, I dropped that, that little plastic pan off the bottom, but nothing else. So. I was kind of seeing how far I could get with that, how quick it would happen. It came together relatively quickly, so maybe I'll put like 10 more minutes into this, tightening up stuff. Then I'll jump over here, drain the engine oil, drain power steering fluid, get the power steering line off the rack and out of the way, undo the steering column, and then take the wheels off to get the brake caliper out of the way. To be honest, I'm not gonna use that brake line, so I'm probably gonna undo the brake line, a bunch of brake fluid's gonna leak everywhere, and what I'm gonna do is cap it with an AN fitting that I have ready, because I'm gonna make my own line that'll at least go from the hard line out, because now the extended, you know, two and a half inches out further, that brake line wasn't gonna work anyway. I'll use the same caliper, I'll use the same rotor, not gonna do anything fancy on this car. It's a budget build. Unfortunately, for you guys watching, you're gonna say that's not fair because this isn't within our budget, is what you'll say about WiseFab, but I'm sorry guys. Sponsored driver, WiseFab supplied that for this build. That part isn't fair for you guys if it's a budget, let's say budget build. But what I can do is show you the steering knuckle off of Frederick Osbo's old Supra, um, Chucky that Ola had here. And we worked on and we actually put Y-Sub on that car, but I 
did like a trade purchase to buy that knuckle. Not that I've used it yet, but I'm a hoarder of super parts. And I thought maybe one day I would want to drive with that, the cut knuckle that he had set up. It seemed like it worked decent back, you know, in 2010 and 2009. In my case, I want this to perform like both the other cars I drive. So I'm going to have to use this and I put nice coilovers because I had the opportunity to have it. But you'll notice they're better, but you could get away with a cheaper set that's like an eBay special set or something. Okay, I'm going to drop that out. As quickly as I can, it's gonna get late. I'm gonna go as long as I can tonight. We'll see how far I get. But drain some fluids right now, then start dropping that out, and then disconnect brake lines, and boom, that whole thing's gonna come out. All right. Okay, so, got the wheel off. What's gonna happen here is we're gonna crack this, nut which will have an inverted flare it'll be 10 m10 1.0 thread pitch inverted flare on the inside just i know because it's a toyota car japanese car they're always that way i have these in stock xrp style inverted flare in the bottom there you can see also this piece once i pull that little sleeve out this will go back in there so what i'll do is i'll crack this right here with my drain bucket below and it'll drip a lot or whatever, we'll lose some brake fluid. And I'll undo it, get this hose end out, let it drain in there, in there, and then this will be dripping down. And I'll shove this back in, and I'll tighten it up, and I've already capped it. We'll come back to it later when we build a brake line, but for now, cap it. And then we're kind of sealed up on this end. And then this end, we just need to later make an XRP-3 line that's longer than this in a steel braided version with a banjo on the back here that will go out you know the extended two and a half whatever inches plus you have to compensate for how much angle <laughs> might have it like five inches longer than this one or maybe even six so i'll show you when i do that but this is the plan on both sides so i'm going to do that first then we'll lower it down even more i'll disconnect the steering column I'll disconnect the plugs that go to these solenoids. There's two plugs that go to this, or this solenoid, the two plugs for the power steering rack, which is a speed sensitivity thing that Toyota and Lexus did back then. Many cars still have stuff like that, so just controls how stiff your steering would be at speed. Then I'm also going to disconnect this sway bar just at this end link, kind of see where it gets me because. I'd like to try and run that. I don't know if it's going to let me, but I'm going to try. So, because I like the sway bar. It's not a modified front end. It's got stock frame rails. Might as well try and run that stock sway bar. It'll help it be snappier. And there's a big heavy pig, so it needs to be snappier. Okay, that's the next steps. I'm not going to film every second of it, but I have you on GoPro over there. So you guys will see some of it. Oh, wheel speed sensors. I got to disconnect wheel speed sensor gotta go underneath there well i gotta get that out because we're not gonna we don't run that anymore wait a minute is that gonna give me a check engine light and then i can't pass smog i gotta abort guys i gotta pass smog tomorrow then we'll do this because that is gonna make me not pass smog and i gotta pass smog so it can be registered <laughs> guys it's the next day so smog is out of the way now let's put this guy in and while we're at it we can also get that header out of there get the exhaust so maybe I'm gonna take the exhaust off first and the plan that I'm thinking is somewhere like by the I don't want to use that ghetto flange I'll use a v-band but somewhere in this area we'll step it up or maybe just use two inch exhaust like that to this other header I have. So we gotta replace from here to there, which will get rid of a lot of cats and let it run a little smoother. So I'll take the header and the exhaust off, possibly right now, and the intake, cause I have another intake for it. And then we'll get ready to drop the subframe in a little bit here. Ooh, turbo's around. Turbo and Joe are working on Supras.
All right, guys. Yeah, Gunny's over here setting up trash this trash can real quick. So we have time lapse footage. But look at this subframe is out, fully attached, how we kind of described it would be. There's the new one to go back in. I'm waiting on that though because I was taking out the header the intake. We have an eBay special header that we're going to throw in there. Just this guy off eBay. Don't even remember which brand it was. But I do have this really nice HPS intake with all the vacuum lines and HPS also set us up with coolant hoses for NA2J. And then we have, I got a new set of exhaust manifold gaskets for before I put the header on from Toyota. And there's a little heat shield thing for the intake. A couple other hoses from HPS in case there's you know, a couple cracked things on the higher mileage stuff, we'll switch it. But before I put the header in and put these new gaskets on, while I had the space in here, I drained the transmission fluid already, but see how the transmission has these hard lines that go up for the cooler that kind of would be impossible to get to when, let's say the exhaust manifold or the motor mount is off on that side, as you can see, I'll kind of rip those out right now. It's gonna make a little bit of a mess, but it might as well do it now while it's easy to get to. Then we'll put the header in. The reason the motor mount is out is look what I found, guys. It's cracked. It's got a nice sever right in here. See how it... These are just the stock ones, but they make the 97, 98 Super one is the same as that. It's a little bit nicer, harder setup. We'll buy a pair of those from Toyota throw them back in tomorrow. So I might wait to put the subframe in till tomorrow. Dang it, yeah, that's what that means, huh? I don't know, maybe I'm putting that back in broken so that I can pull the trans out and start getting set up on the clutch and do the rear main seal and stuff like that. And then I'll just kind of hover the motor when it's time to do. That's frustrating, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. Anyways, that's where we're at. I looked around, I don't have any other motor mounts. I don't know what to do yet. I could put solid mounts, I don't wanna do that because I will drive like crap on the street. Just be like vibrating the whole time. And we don't need to feel that much vibration if you're gonna try and cruise it around here and there. I had talked about this yesterday. So that's where we ended off so we're not leaking too much. We'll wait till the whole front subframe is back in here and then we'll make the this line out to the caliper. And I already connected the stock rotors and calipers over to the wise fab. They're on there nice. Yeah, moving along. Still gotta do a diff bushings, subframe bushings in the back. Then we gotta pull interior apart. Sparco mounts for the seats, Sparco seat, Sparco hub, Sparco steering wheel. Oh man, a lot of cool parts, but a lot of stuff to do. Hoping to have it finished by this weekend minus the drive shaft because we gotta get that in order it tomorrow morning maybe there's a way we could rush it i just doubt it probably won't see that till like middle of next week okay back at it guys So we're trying to pass inspection right now. Here's the inspector. I need to see underneath, sir. Oh, uh, <laughs> dang it. it. Looks good, Dan. But we don't have a subframe in yet. Still fine? I didn't know you could do all that without. Well, what this is holding the sub. Oh. So I haven't shown you guys this yet. That's like that tower brace thingy. There's a real name for it. Someone could tell us in the comments. Depending on the motor, you use ratchet straps or a chain or whatever. In this case, it's not very much space, so I use ratchet straps and double back. And it's like held up by the water pump in front here and the rear toe or rear like hook that you pull the motor out with normally on the back. It just was too tight to do it on the front hook. Okay, so since you guys were gone. I have a question before you get technical. Why? <laughs> Is there even more space than the Supra? No, not from thing? like this point. From right here, back is identical, but then from here to there, kind of cuts a little I think more. it is longer. 
he had x-ray vision. <gasps> Wait, there's a Supra. Luckily, we have a Supra around. Yeah, it's, lo it's longer. Good old SC is much longer. Can't even get to the, yeah. I don't know how much, but it's a little longer. CX Racing or eBay Special, I can't remember. I bought that originally for the Ice Supra, and then the Ice Supra didn't happen because it didn't wasn't gonna work out right. I'm sharing it with the other guy. So I had a header, a really cheap like $119 header upstairs in the shop, and then you know it's time to use it. Let me tell you, didn't go on too easy. I had to take every stud out and like flex it and like pry it and then like re-thread every stud. And anyways, it's on there, it's in. But this is a really cool intake you can get from HPS. That was easy to go on and bolted right in. Works nice. This was actually for a Supra, so I can't use the heat shield. They might have one for SC. I didn't look, but I don't want to ask for another one because they already helped me with this one. So there we go. Cold air intake, lets your mass airflow bolt right into it. And then AEM dry flow filter, that, that's separate, but we put that on. I feel like it's just time to throw this in. So I had that broken motor mount. I found a used one, installed a used one on there, which I'm buying two, I bought two, like two new ones. They won't be here till tomorrow. But the thing is, is I want to, Take the trans out and I want to get the ZF bolted in here tonight so I can measure. So I want to put the ACT clutch in, uh, the adapter kit from Collins and all the pieces. And then I want to get the ZF in there and everything so that I can know the drive shaft measurement and then order the drive shaft because that's going to be our biggest waiting game part. It's probably going to be like three days. Maybe if we're lucky, if I put the order in tomorrow and he did build it tomorrow, I could get it by Friday or Saturday. If I got Saturday delivery, then I could drive the car by Saturday maybe. Who knows? So that's why I'm going to throw the subframe in and connect at least the subframe to the, the motor. Just let it sit on the subframe. I might not connect the steering column. I might not connect everything else because I'm going to like go straight to the transmission so that I could get further along in that area. Oh, I did take the hard lines out for the transmission, like I said I would. I haven't done, just slowly been working. So, oh, look at the old stuff. Let's put this guy in now. So we're gonna end today's episode with the install of this Wisefab steering lock kit and the stance coilovers. We also got them on the back. Fresh steering rack and we did the intake and the exhaust and a couple other little miscellaneous things, but it's been really exciting working on this car. It's not as complex as let's say my competition car or some of these other customer cars that are just way over the top. like. Some of these Supras, this has been a lot of fun. Hopefully it can relate to some of you guys. I know there is some parts that are getting a little carried away from partners I work with, but overall this is pretty easy to just interchange one part for another instead of everything's custom, which is what we're used to, which takes so much time and effort. So I've been moving along pretty quickly on this one. Still got a little bit of ways to go. We're gonna do the rest of the drive line, which will consist of the adapter kit, clutch and flywheel, ACT stuff. We gotta do some pedals and whatnot, and then put the ZF trans drive line in the back drive shaft, and then the rear diff and some bushings. But I'll include you guys with each part that we're using and why we picked those ones. And um, 
yeah, it's been pretty fun. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you guys soon.